Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Ryan Selinger. Today we will be performing a veneer replacement procedure. Uh, and uh, smile for us. So we'll be getting in here and we'll be changing the, the, the six anterior veneers. Here we have um, some space between the teeth and that's created by the, a little bit of the re a recession of the gum. And uh, what that creates is what's called, referred to as a black triangle. So uh, oftentimes you'll see in pictures uh, a black triangle between the teeth and it's not, you know, it's not so attractive. So um, what we can do is in the new veneers we'll actually adapt the veneer so that you'll actually, you won't see that black triangle. What we're doing now is uh, we are preparing the mouth um, for the removal of the old veneers. I'm placing some cotton rolls in the cheeks and what that will do is uh, it'll give me a place where I can place my fingers and pull up her, um, our patient's uh, our, our lips so that we can work. And, uh, the mouth prop is used so uh, our patient is able to just rest their jaw on that. They don't have to, to stay open, they just can rest and relax. Here we see we have begun to remove the old veneers. I like to place slots down each individual tooth. What that does is it allows us to easily remove um, the veneers or separate the, the veneers from the underlying tooth structure. Here you want to be extraordinarily careful to, to place uh, enough of these slots so that you don't damage the underlying tooth structure. And we use a lot of water and then we use a separating tool to actually break the old veneers off, uh, off the teeth and make sure that, uh, there's, uh, that the natural tooth is not harmed. Once the veneers have been removed, we go back to the teeth and we prepare the teeth. In order to verify that we have prepared our teeth enough, uh, we place a tooth preparation guide, uh, a mold or a negative impression of our wax up with a window in the, uh, in the anterior or in the front of it so that we can look through and, and place it in the mouth and see that we actually have the adequate tooth preparation. The next step is to get the teeth uh, and the mouth ready to take impressions of the, of the teeth. Um, impressions are made um, so that um, we can make models of the teeth and um, actually the lab uses the models to, to actually fa fabricate the, the veneers. Uh, anything sharp underneath the veneer um, will make the veneers a little bit more susceptible uh, to fracture and failure down the road. And now we are going ahead and we are going to prepare the gum tissue uh, for the impression. Um, we want to retract the gums um, away from the tooth structure so that we get a very, very accurate impression of just the teeth alone. Um, the next thing I like to do is to place um, a, a substance called Exposil. And uh, what the Exposil serves to do is a clay-like substance. Uh, it acts to further uh, push the gum tissue down and if there's a little bit of bleeding in the gum tissue it also eliminates the bleeding. Once we have retracted the tissue, what I like to do is make sure our custom tray fits. What I like to do in, in all of these types of cases in, in which we're doing veneers or a full mouth rehabilitation is to fabricate a custom tray for our patients. Uh, the impression is probably one of the most important aspects of, of the day because that is where we transfer what we've done in the mouth to the model. So we'll try in our, our custom tray, make sure that fits perfectly, um, and we're able to get the, the tray in and out of the mouth um, quickly. Uh, the next thing uh, we will do is to use a syringable impression material and that gets syringed on the margins, again, to ensure that we have a very, very accurate impression of margin. Uh, the margin is the area where the, the actual veneer meets the, the tooth structure and that's kind of the most important aspect of the veneer. So that's going to be a very, very important to capture in our impression. Now the impression stays in the mouth for approximately five minutes. And we also, once we pull it out of the mouth, we often pull the retraction cords out. And uh, you want to obviously count those retraction cords. After our impression is made, um, the next step in, the, in this journey is to make sure we get a, a good bite registration. Uh, bite registration is used so that once the models are made, we can actually put the upper model 
and articulate the upper model to the lower model. The next thing we, we do, especially when we're doing these larger cases in which we have uh, more teeth that are prepared, uh, we want to use what's called a face bow. What the face bow allows us to do is actually put the models on a machine and this model actually will replicate the functionality of, of the jaw based on these measurements so that we, at the end, will have uh, models, an upper and lower model of the mouth that, that closely replicates the way it functions in, in, in the patient. Extremely important, especially when you're doing anterior teeth, to get the functionality of, of, of the teeth. Obviously, it's not enough to make them look pretty. We have to uh, make them function as well, and uh, this is how we do it. After our records are taken, we are preparing the mouth or preparing the teeth to receive the temporaries. The temporaries are fabricated using a mold of our wax up. It's a negative impression of the wax up and we are able to place a resin material in the mold and place that on the, on the teeth. In order to get the temporaries in the mouth we have to prepare the teeth and we disinfect the teeth. We use a consepsis, a chlorohexidine is a fantastic um, disinfectant and you'll see me using that throughout the procedure. We have to really make sure that these teeth are, are, are very clean throughout. So the first thing we'll do is we'll disinfect the teeth and then we will use a, an etchant. What the etchant does is it roughens up the tooth structure so that uh, we have more uh, tooth surface or, or more surface area so that we get a better bond. After we etch, we place a bonding agent in the etch. Uh, the bonding agent is cured with a light and that really serves as an interface between the tooth structure and the actual resin and it helps to bond the temporaries to the teeth. So uh, we see here we have placed the mold with the uh, temporary material in the mouth. We keep that in for two to three minutes. We want it to set to the teeth and we remove the excess. Once the temporaries have cured, we remove the mold and we're left with our, our uh, temporaries in the mouth. Once the temporaries have set in the mouth, we remove the matrix and um, what we'll do next is to uh, fill in any voids that may have occurred uh, by the incorporation of, of air. Um, in addition, we'll remove any excess material. Once the, once the temporaries are in, we want to adjust the, uh, the functionality of the teeth, make sure the movements in the mouth are correct, and then we can go back in the mouth and make uh, additional um, revisions as needed. Open mouth, open normal. Okay, good, bite down all the way. So uh, the, the second day is a matter of um, getting the veneers to fit properly. Um, there's a lot to do on this second day, so if we don't like something, they can go back in the oven, they can be reshaped. Anything uh, that needs to be done can be done here in the office. The beginning of the, of the second day um, starts with the removal of our temporaries, and again, the temporaries come out in a similar fashion to the old veneers. We place a slot down the middle of each individual tooth and we are able to place a separator between the teeth and actually the, the temporaries just flake off and they come off pretty easily. Here we see we are fitting each individual tooth. We do this one at a time and what we are looking here for is to make sure that our margins are meticulous, that they're, they're very, very smooth that there is no spaces between the tooth structure and the actual veneer. In addition to that, we want to make sure that our contacts between each individual tooth is appropriate and is tight. So we place a piece of articulating paper, it's a, essentially a carbon paper that goes between the veneers and it will mark the, t the veneer if, if the contact is too tight. We get them adjusted properly, make sure our contacts are perfect, make sure our margins are perfect, there are no gaps between the tooth structure and uh, the actual veneers, and um, then it's just a matter of cementation. We are going to cure our bonding agent to the tooth and 
on each tooth gets cured for 10 seconds. Once both the, the tooth structure and the veneers are prepared, they are placed in the mouth. I will have my assistant hand me the two central teeth first and work my way down the sides. This way we ensure that everything is, is seated properly. And uh, once they are all, all, this, all six veneers, in this particular case, all six veneers are placed down, um, what I want to do is to uh, remove the excess cement and that I use um, some floss and I, and I run the floss through each individual tooth making sure that uh, we remove as much of the cement as possible. Once all of the teeth have been seated in the mouth with the cement, what we do is we actually hold down an individual tooth and actually light cure that individual tooth to ensure that that particular tooth is seated properly and that no other tooth at that same time is being cured. Once we have uh, cemented and cured, light cured all of the teeth, each individual tooth um, needs to be cured for approximately 60 seconds so that uh, we know for sure that all of the veneers are, are fully set and the, and the cement is, is set. Once all our, our veneers are fully seated, we go ahead and we make our uh, bite adjustments. Um, we're checking for functionality, making sure that our teeth are functioning properly. And then we'll go ahead and polish the um, undersurface of, of, of the teeth. And that's basically it. The, basically, the, the veneers are, are, are in, um, they are adjusted, um, the excess cement is removed, um, and then we have a final chance to uh, make sure we like, our, like them. The next thing you, you, we see here is our before and after pictures. We can see that we were able to successfully remove the black triangles. We brought the teeth up, up a little bit higher to cover um, some of the recession. Um, and we uh, accomplished a nice natural um, white smile, which is what the patient was looking to achieve. Uh, that concludes the veneer replacement procedure. Uh, again, my name is Dr. Ryan Selinger. Uh, for more information, you can uh, find us at uh, www.wallstreetsmiles.com.